Well, hello friends and welcome. Welcome to another episode where I review special vintage fountain pens. This time I have for you an iconic fountain pen, a beautiful, beautiful fountain pen. I bought it on the second hand market in its original box. And we are talking about this beautiful, beautiful Parker box and this beautiful, beautiful fountain pen. What is uh, special about this fountain pen? Well, um, this is an NOS model. It was never inked. And I am quite proud to own it. So, uh, you can see it is a black fountain pen. It is the Parker 51 and it is the aromatic version of the Parker 51. It has this specific filling mechanism. And you can see that the inner sac, the inner plastics, um, the inner uh, rubber sac, uh, transparent rubber sac, it is um, quite clean. So I believe it was never inked. Well, uh, this fountain pen is uh, made in England and uh, one of the clues is um, thermically imprinted on the barrel made in England, as you can see. But uh, I was quite surprised when I received it in this elegant, elegant box. You can see no ink on it, it is immaculate. And I was surprised to see, look here, Parker 51 in detail, those gorgeous, gorgeous writings, gold writings. Sorry, I was surprised to see that the instructions were in German. So, Parker 51 aerometric model, and you can see full halter, um, written in German and I discovered that this fountain pen was made for the Austrian market. Here are some instructions on how to fill it. Open the barrel, squeeze this rod and here are some instructions for the ballpoint pen. On the back of the leaflet, we have the Parker Pen Company, USA, England, Canada, France, and uh, I don't know, U of South Africa, United uh, South Africa States, I, I'm, I'm not so sure. Maybe it refers to South Africa, and uh, it was... Um, uh, English colony, I don't know for sure. Uh, but um, we have printed in Austria 5155. Maybe 51 refers to the um, uh, fountain pen number and 55 refers to the ballpoint uh, model. So quite, quite um, an interesting story has uh, this uh, NOS model. I will leave the leaflet here. And I will close this box. By the way, the box has this pattern of uh, lizard skin, but uh, it's uh, an imitation. It's made out of cardboard and it has an L2. Maybe the L2, it is the model of uh, the box. And you can see it's in uh, immaculate shape. I think it's from the early 1960s. I don't know for sure. But I've done a previous review of the Parker 51. I have here a model made in America. So uh, at the beginning of the 1950s. And it has some uh, clues that is from uh, the beginning of... Because um, it uh, has some instructions. And I will show them to you. That refer to uh, ink that was produced only at the beginning of the production of the Parker 51. In the beginning of the 1950s. So we have practically the same the screwed in cap. 
this time it has some instructions written on this barrel and I want to show them to you. Let me show them to you. So Parker 51 to fill press rubber bar firmly four times use dry writing super chrome ink so this type of ink holding pen point down one point wipe point with soft tissue the parker pen company made in usa you can see that this is a used sack and it has this brown or black color and you can observe the ending of the aromatic filling mechanism with this plastic. This is characteristic of the early years of production. Here we don't have thermically imprinted made in USA like the other fountain pens. And uh, indeed, uh, this cap, it's uh, not in its uh, finest shape. It lacks this jewel at the ending. But um, I like it as it is with this patina. I wanted to show you what it is uh, written on it, so let me focus. Let, let us see if I can focus, yes. So I have Parker and 12. Oh, let me zoom on it because I'm quite curious to see what we have here. I think it's 14 karat gold plated, but um, I want to be sure. So, gold filled or gold plated? I think it's gold filled. Okay, ten. Uh, I'm not so sure what uh, it stands for, but I believe it's um, the gold plating of the cap. And. Um, I will leave it aside. Let me sh uh, look at this one because uh, this is an NOS. So we have Parker written here. And let me see. No, this English version has only Parker written on the cap. It has a beautiful jewel. So this is uh, how a proper cap uh, was when it was new. Okay, I will put the cap here. So, uh, behind the cap we have Parker made in, Eng made in England. Okay, and let me see what we have written on this aromatic system. First of all, you can see the ending, also a plastic ending. You can see the beautiful um, sack, transparent sack, which is immaculate. And we have Parker 51 to fill pressed ribbed bar firmly four times holding pen point down wipe point with soft tissues. So no mention of uh, that uh, special ink on this model. If uh, we put them side by side we can notice that uh, they are identical without the cap so the same uh, or not let me see it appears we have a slightly slightly difference but uh, barely noticeable of one millimeter in the sense that the uh, usa made one seems a little bit higher okay let me put this aside because I have prepared for you some other fountain pens made in the 1950s. And um, if you see the review of this fountain pen on my channel, you will um, find out about the history of the Parker 51. Well, um, when you say Parker 51, you say the most popular fountain pen ever made in the whole world because they sold it in millions of examples and um, as you saw on the leaflet they had in Canada uh, factories let me show them to you because it's quite important to see they were well spread throughout the world in the sense they had to cover all the demand so they had um, 
manufacturing facilities in USA, in England, in Canada, France, and even in Africa. You must know that the Parker 51 was quite a, quite a popular fountain pen, and although it was launched before the Second World War, of course it had two v versions of it. So the first version was the vacuumatic uh, version, and uh, the second was the aerometric version. For me, uh, truly Parker 51 has the aerometric filling mechanism. Because even the Chinese, when they knocked off this model, they uh, went for the simple aerometric uh, filling mechanism, which is quite, quite a, a simple mechanism in comparison with the vacuumatic one. And I preferred um, things to be more simple, not complicated. And uh, even a person without knowledge can... Uh, uh, repair it or uh, can broke it, can break it. But uh, in my case, I prefer the aromatic model. So this fountain pen was so popular that lots of its uh, design elements was borrowed. And for example, I have here a fountain pen, quite an interesting fountain pen, a stylus fountain pen, one 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 oro. And if you look at it, it simply resembles the Parker 51 in the sense that we have also a jewel. The shape of it is almost identical, but when we uh, take out the pressure fit cap, we can see an ink window, which is quite strange, and an open, open nib with a feed. So this was a, an interesting example how the Italians uh, tried to integrate, and uh, most of all it's a piston filler, <laughs> believe it or not, with a, a blind cap. Look at it. <laughs> so, quite, quite uh, lots of design elements that were borrowed from, from the Parker 51. And now I will show you the most popular fountain pen ever made in uh, Italy with uh, these uh, versions of it. So this is the Aurora 88. And here I have an 88K, which uh, you can see a piston filler with an ink window, but when we put it side by side near the Parker 51, you can see the similarities with it. And here I have a much more newer model, a cartridge model, the evolution, the next step evolution in the evolution of the Aurora 88. This is an 888P, I believe. Yes, an 888P from Aurora, a much more newer model with uh, a cartridge filling uh, mechanism in comparison with the piston filler. So I will leave those aside. You notice the similarities with the Parker 51. So not only the Parker 51 influenced the Chinese knockoffs industry of fountain pens in the 70s and 80s, but uh, it was quite a popular model uh, worldwide. I will leave the dimensions of this English made Parker 51. And after that, I will do a writing sample. But uh, being an NOS model, I just will wipe the um, point and the little feed in ink, and we will do the writing sample. For the writing sample, I will use the Pelican 4001 Königsblau Royal Blue. Okay, let's put it here and I will open it. I will simply dip the fountain pen in ink and now I will make sure that I remove the excess from the grip section. Okay, now I am ready for the writing sample. Remember guys to always close your ink bottle after you use it to avoid accidents. So, I will leave the 
cap here and I have uh, Parker 51 this is the arrow metric version uh, this was made in England made in England and I presume in the early 1960s okay let me zoom on it I want to show you how it uh, writes okay this particular model has a 14 karat gold nib and uh, the ink that I use now it is a pelican pelican 4001 royal blue a royal blue uh, okay let me see if we have some line variations no no flex to it no flex let me see how juicy it is so quite a juicy uh, nib and let me do the pressure test you can see no major line variation let me see the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so this is the writing sample quite quite a nice nice uh, Parker 51 and um, quite a nice uh, nib it uh, simply glides off the paper no pressure it uh, writes uh, beautifully uh, a classic classic workhorse so guys this was my review of this elegant elegant fountain pen that influenced such uh, great uh, models in uh, the history of the fountain pen i hope you've enjoyed this review if you've enjoyed this review please subscribe to my channel in uh, order to support my activity wherever you are i wish you to have a nice day i uh, thank you for your time uh, see you again at the next episode and till then Bye bye